So this is a, an application that we've been developing. It's based on a, a fire package that's running under Flutter. Once you log in, you can register patients, search for patients. These are some patients that um, we've already downloaded. You can edit the patients though. Uh, add in families. And all of these, all of this data that's being collected is all stored locally as a, a fire resource, which can then be uploaded uh, to the server later. Gray, you've been doing this in your informatics fellowship. Is this yep. a part of your fellowship? It, it is, yes. And how long have you spent on this? How much time? Um, I, I, I don't know. It's been it a year. Feels like, um, yeah, it's felt, it feels like a, a large portion of the last year I've spent working okay. in development. And why? Because I think that, um, for a couple of reasons, I think that fire is incredibly important. It now has the, um, the support from enough of the community that I think it, it has the capability of becoming a true interoperability standard of being able to share data the way that we were always promised um, in informatics. And the reason that we're using so much data collection is to actually be able to do really amazing things. And I don't think we've gotten to yet, but I, I think Fire is a stepping stone to being able to do that. And then um, Flutter specifically, because I think it gives you an amazing amount of flexibility in terms of, of use and ease of use. It's, um, it's an easy to use uh, user interface. It's all open source designed by Google. So it's easy to make kind of, uh, you know, beautiful presentations, which in medicine, I don't think we always understand the import, but, but certainly how data and information is presented is amazingly important. And I think Flutter makes it really easy to do that well. And as I said, it's flexible, so you can run it on iOS or Android, and it's coming for desktop and web, so you don't have to kind of redo all of your code bases. And so I think the two of them together um, make a really powerful combination. That's awesome. This is the open source app that you've been making? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And it runs a local Fire server that you can then sync over to the cloud? Yep, it, it's all embedded. Um, so it, it, it all the information is stored locally on the device. Um, it, it was It's geared towards kind of low resource settings where you may not have internet all the time. And so the idea being that this way you can work with your resources, you can do the work you need to do. Uh, and then when you get back in range of your server, any changes that you've made, you can upload. It stores history of all the resources. And so, as we know in medicine, you can't change anything without having the paper trail behind it. So this will store all the historical resources as well. Um, and it'll upload all of that. Uh, so your server has a complete picture of, of any changes that have been made as well as the, the newest accurate version. Walk us through a patient. We have a package um, for immunizations that right now just give recommendations. And so if you click on this, this is going to load all the patients past immunizations uh, and send back recommendations about when they're due for their next dose. And if it's in red, they're overdue. And if it's in yellow, it's uh, due in the next month. And then it has all the rest of them. And this is all based on the fire specification for immunization forecasting. And we think this is important to allow flexibility so that because um, the uh, package that we've developed here accepts the same payload and returns the expected payload uh, as any sort of server that follows the fire specification, you can swap them out if you want to, which again allows uh, more of a microservices architecture and, and more flexibility moving forward. And when you're done with it and you're ready to sync, you just press this and this is automatically going to sync the application. This is some of the basic code for um, Thinking, which you're welcome to look through. If you're wondering about um, this uh, address here, this is what the um, Android VM requires for a local server. So I'm running a local happy server, storing all these resources. And then this uh, interface class will automatically upload and download all of your resources for you. And this is all based on a package that uh, John and I have been working on for Fire running in, in Dart and Flutter. So you could run this actually as just a Dart package if you were working on the command line or 
anything, um, but it works for Flutter in order to be able to use all the Fire resources. And so if you're at all familiar with Fire, there are multiple versions that are out there. The first one that anyone uses is DSTU2, STU3, and then the first one, which has normalized content, although not completely normalized, is R4, and R5 is the upcoming one. And this package supports all those resources, so you're able to kind of download, serialize, and deserialize in order to be able to use it, all you have to do um, currently is include uh, the GitHub repository, although we are working on making it a, a full package. And then anywhere you want to use it, you just import the package like this. And then here is your version. So if you want DSTU2, this would be DSTU2, but we're gonna use R4 because that's the one that we're most commonly used. If for some reason you want to use both of them, um, you're setting something up where you have to accept it from different versions, then uh, you can import it with an as and then rename it. And then you just have to remember to stick this as a prefix to any variables that you may be using that are from fire. So after you've included the package and then say you wanted to create a patient, you create it like this. And so this has all of the fields that um, fire allows for a patient. Um, it will tell you if you've not filled out required fields. Some of them have um, required fields, again, following the fire specification. Um, a number of them uh, are enums because it only allows certain values and most of those are already built in. And so it really shouldn't let you uh, put in information um, that is inappropriate or doesn't follow the fire specification. And so then the other way is if you don't want to create your own, you're just wanting to download it from the server, then again, you're going to include the normal things that you're going to use for any sort of HTTP or REST requests. Uh, and then again, this is a very simple sort of application. And this is our Firebase. And this is um, the open, happy Fire server, uh, which anyone can access online. You do need to put headers in um, in order for the application to know what format it is. And then you can choose your desired resource. This can be any fire resource. Uh, this should still work. So if you want patient or observation uh, or immunization, you just put it here. This will call, do a get response for the server and you will get your response. You can then decode it. And so bundle from JSON is part of the fire library. And so you now have a search set bundle. And so this variable is now formatted in a way that uh, Dart and Flutter can use, but you can download it from any sort of fire server and then we're just printing it. And then, so then there's some other information down here about kind of the details, if you feel like reading more about it, but that's the, the basics on how you would uh, utilize this package in order to be able to work with fire data. Cool, good job.